Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Join me now to discuss the outcome of the Ukraine Week in the European Parliament is the EU Ambassador to Ukraine, Mr. Jan Tombinsky. Mr. Tombinsky, welcome to Ukraine Today. Good morning. Mr. Tombinsky, um, the outcome of the Ukraine Week in the European Parliament uh, was the signing of the Administrative Cooperation Agreement, which according to the statement by the EU uh, was the first ever this kind of agreement which the European Parliament signed with another parliament. So what is the main significance of this agreement for both parties? The main significance of this agreement is the engagement. Uh, it shows also a very high level of political will on the European side uh, to assist Ukraine and to assist Ukraine in a way that corresponds with Ukraine wishes. Pat Cox, the former president of the European Parliament, uh, was charged by the President of European Parliament, Martin Schulz, to execute the mission to Ukraine and to define problems and to find remedies to certain problems in the work of Ukrainian Parliament in order to increase the capacity of the Parliament to cope with the new legislation. And not only to cope with the new legislation, but also to increase the transparency and by increasing transparency, the legitimacy of all the legal acts adopted by the Ukrainian parliament. With several visits to Ukraine, talking to different stakeholders in the Ukrainian parliament, Pat Cox and his team they issued a kind of a report with uh, certain recommendations how to uh, make the work of the Ukrainian parliament better. In the meantime, we've seen as well improvements in the work of uh, the staff of the Ukrainian parliament uh, with uh, better use of IT systems, uh, with better access uh, to documents, uh, with more transparency in, uh, uh, and openness in how the parliament uh, reacts uh, uh, to the wishes of other people. It should all be a strengthening of Ukrainian democracy. So European parliament uh, is able to uh, uh, commit to a Ukrainian parliament expertise, uh, all the assistance. So we are now uh, in a process of defining also the financial needs, how to help the Parliament, the Verkhovna Rada, to be uh, uh, better off in uh, its uh, own action. This report, uh, Mr. Ambassador, which you mentioned, which was prepared by Mr. Pat Cox, it contained 52 recommendations for the Ukrainian Parliament on how to improve um, its, its work and um, its, its, its regulations. Can you tell us, and um, during the Ukraine week in, in, in Brussels, uh, there were a number of MPs uh, present um, on top of the chairman of uh, the Ukrainian parliament. So can you tell us how was this report, how was these recommendations received by the Ukrainian MPs back in Brussels? From all the Ukrainian MPs, I didn't see any critical comment uh, about uh, the report because the report states rather obvious things. First. Uh, uh, you should follow your regulations. Uh, one of the findings of uh, this uh, mission of Pat Cox was that the uh, Ukrainian parliament uh, uh, is equipped with very many rules. It's perhaps an over-regulated parliament and by over-regulation you come to uh, uh, situations where people don't observe rules uh, and uh, this is uh, the first negative situation uh, that uh, people uh, don't observe rule, so rules. Second, this is the question of uh, all the work of experts uh, uh, who should check the legislative proposals uh, against uh, the compliance with uh, general rules and uh, with the Ukrainian constitution in order to avoid that the parliament adopts laws on amendments to the laws on amendments to the laws uh, and uh, by uh, such a complicated and complex proceedings you are losing the transparency and the ability of people to understand what are the rules if there are several overlaps. So it's much better to make a rule from an outset 
a good one than to amend uh, on rules that have been adopted. Mr. Ambassador, what about the timeline? Is there some concrete timeline set in the other recommendations or in the agreement, uh, most importantly, which uh, Ukrainian Parliament signed, as to fulfillment? Of these recommendations, because um, obviously it's 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 all good to 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 write and propose, and the Ukrainian peace uh, will will say yes, we're more than happy to do that. But um, according to uh, European President Martin Schulz, he said uh, that these recommendations should not be put in the final cabinet; they should be implemented. So, who will control the implementation of these recommendations? Or is this, it up to the Ukrainian parliament? This is up to the Ukrainian parliament. The Ukrainian parliament is a sovereign uh, body. It's uh, the main representation of uh, Ukrainian people. So it is now in the hands of uh, Ukrainian parliament. But uh, uh, from uh, all my talks with uh, uh, the president, uh, the speaker of the Verkhovna Rada, uh, with uh, uh, deputy speakers, uh, with uh, uh, heads of fractions, I've seen only the desire now to work out a working plan with timelines and also with certain specifications what are the means needed in order to implement the plan. So basically what, what, what you are saying is that the Ukrainian parliament will now adopt a plan to implement a plan. So, uh, to implement uh, recommendations, to Im because this is not a plan, there are recommendations. So in order to implement recommendations, you should uh, have a plan how to uh, make it uh, happen and uh, how to allow um, the uh, uh, improvement of the work. Mr. Maso, you as the ambassador uh, personally and the EU in general, how confident are you that the Ukrainian parliament will follow these recommendations. How confident are you that this will not become yet another de declarative statement by Ukrainian politicians that will say, okay, we'll do that and just forget? I see a growing critical mass in uh, the understanding uh, among uh, deputies uh, that they should uh, better reply to the needs of the Ukrainian population. I guess this is the, the major check. This is not about me being confident or not confident. This is about making Ukrainian people confident with the work, uh, how the uh, Verkhovna Rada corresponds and responds to the choice made by Ukrainian people. Well, unfortunately, the Ukrainian people aren't very uh, confident with the Ukrainian parliament these days. This is the way how to increase this confidence, I guess. Uh, it worked in uh, so many other uh, countries uh, and uh, uh, this was uh, the mission of Pat Cox, this uh, uh, 52 recommendations. It is not an invention, it is rather a reference to uh, practices uh, from other parliaments. Uh, so it works in another country, so why shouldn't it work in Ukraine? I'm always in my comments uh, with uh, uh, different Ukrainian partners. I am trying to convince them Ukraine is not an historical exception. What works in other countries, they also work in Ukraine. Don't look for different excuses why this or other solution can't work in Ukraine. Because you shouldn't be an exceptional country. Try to be a normal country. Well, let's hope it does work in Ukraine indeed, Mr. Ambassador. We were discussing the Ukraine's week in the European Parliament and the agreements which were signed by both parties during that meeting with the EU Ambassador to Ukraine, Mr. Jan Tombinsky. I'm Vladimir Solohub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.